in this video we're going to focus on our Y scale title and normally it's always like here somewhere but in this case we're going to move it up here at the very top so let's start to explore how we can do this in this video we're going to explore one of the viewers question which is how to place the Y scale title above the scale in chart.js and this question came from one of my other videos about how to add scale titles in chart.js so if we scroll down here, you can see here eventually this question came from Ilya Shikhov. A special thank you to Ilya for asking the question and this is what Ilya asked. How do I expand the Y scale title so that it is a horizontal and slightly above the scale? All right, so let's start to look at that. So in essence, you're not able to do it by the default structure. So we have to really create a customized solution for this. However, it's quite easy to do if you follow along. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to go to chartjs3.com getting started. This is the link. Basically, we're going to grab here the default code. So I'm going to copy this code here. And once I have this code, paste this in here. And if you would like to understand this code, make sure you watch this specific video that explains it all. So then what we're going to do is I'm just going to cut out the title here, put the title there. And then save that refresh all right so now we have this so let's start to create a scale on the y-axis here so what we're going to do here is the following we're going to scroll down here and basically what we need to do is we need to create a plugin so i'm going to say here comma after the options here comma enter say plugins and then in here the plugins i'll just call this our y scale text so this is very important because we need to make a customized solution for this. So once we have this, we're going to put it in here and I'll just say here is our Y scale plugin block. And in here, I'll say constant this equals. And then here we do curly braces. And then in here, ID, I'll put in this here. And this will be important later on because we're going to use this later on as well as a reference in the options. So the next thing what I need to do is I need to select the timing of drawing. So I'm going to say here just after draw. So after everything is drawn, we will draw this very item on here. And what we're going to do here is the following. I'm going to say here, I'm going to grab here the chart, the arguments, and the options. And the options, this one will be important because of this here later on. These two are so interconnected with each other. So the first thing what I want to do here is because what I need to do here really is to grab or get the position on it. Luckily, your position is quite straightforward here, which is we're going to here in the top 0, 0.0. Basically, we can stop start in the very top corner here, left corner top. So this is in the canvas here. And if you want to understand more about this, I would highly recommend you to explore the chart area section. I have a separate video for that. I will show you later on the link for that one. So what we're going to do here? Once a constant, I'm going to say here. We're going to do here basically an object destructuring. So we go to CTX, comma, chart area, and then your column, and we get the top. That's the only one I need. And if you want to understand that later on, chart area information uh, video, I would highly recommend you to watch that as well. Comma X, comma Y, and then this equals the chart. So basically, with the chart area, we only want to know here where the starting point at the very top, basically here. That's this point here. So if you look here in the canvas, you have this white space here, and this is basically what we call the chart area, or this is the top of the chart area. And we need to be here between, because we need to calculate the space here between where we need to start. So that will be important. The next thing what we need to do now is we need to say here, ctx.save. And ctx refers to the canvas itself, because we want to draw something in the canvas here. So then, what we need to do is we need to save all these values and coordinates here so we can start to insert a drawing in there. And what we really want to draw is basically just text. So what I'm going to say here is ctx.font. And what I'm going to do in here is just very straightforward for now. I'm going to say here this is a string, 12 pixels. Font type will be Arial. And then next I'm going to say here is ctx. And we're going to have here a color for the font. So we say fill style because we want to fill up the font completely and uh, the, the fill style will be let's say here our default color in charge yes is triple six so we have this and then finally here would be the fill 
text, which would be ctx.fieldText, and this would indicate a few items. This is very important. Here we have, of course, the, the title. So let's say here, y skill, skill, title, we can say like that, or y skill, something you, something you want to add up here. And next, we have to select here, basically here, the x coordinates and the y coordinates. So where we want to start, and then let's say here 0, 0.0, which means at the very top, and then here also at the very left, or at least or the y is horizontal, so at the very left, and then the y, or the x is horizontal, sorry, and the y is vertical. So x, which means at the very left, 0, and then y at the very top. So I'm going to just say indicate here, 0, 0. Once we did this semicolon, I'm going to say ctx.restore, and you should now, if I do semicolon here, save that, refresh, there we are. So we have something here, but of course it's very undesirable and it starts here somewhere in the center, or at least the baseline is the center, so that's why it's starting to uh, clip away a certain point. So what we can do here is we have to can move it down a bit. Let's say we want to move it 10 pixels down. Save that. There we are. So that might be quite decent here. Or if you would like to be more aligned, we could just say here at the top. That's where we have the top here. And then we do minus 10 pixels. If I save that, refresh, let's see. We have like this. We could do maybe minus 15 pixels. Save that, refresh. That looks slightly more appropriate. All right, so now we have this here. We have these colors here. Uh, yeah, this one would be, of course, fine. We don't have to move it at all. But what I do want to do is, or what I do want is to give it a color. So let's say we want to give it a color. We have this color here, but there's another way to do it, and that's we're going to the options. Because maybe you say, well, hold on, I have this here, but I don't want to play around with R, with the plugin block. I want to do it here in the options. All right, so let's do that one. So that's why we have here the ID reference of this specific object name, or uh, well, basically object. So after the scales, you can see here you have the scales, comma, and we are still within the options here. Make sure you make sure you pay attention. You are within the options. Well, this plugin is outside of the options. We're going to say here plugins, colon, or oh, sorry, uh, curly braces, and then we're going to say here the Y scale text, which is the ID name here. And then say a colon, and then in here we can start to say, for example, um, font color. And the font color could be, in this case, this specific value here. Let's cut that out. Go in there. All right, so make sure you have this commas if ever it is necessary. There we are. Everything's fine here. So we have this one here. So let's give this another color. Let's give this blue for now. So if I would save this, how do I adjust this here? Well, remember. We have the scales here and we have these options here. So we're going to copy this. So this would indicate search in the options, this specific object or namespace. And in this namespace, we're going to get here the font color. So I'm going to grab this here and say it dot that. So basically it knows in the options, it look for this specific namespace with this namespace or object name with this namespace here. So in reality, what we're really saying is this that's basically what we're doing here. But however, we don't need to redefine it because this ID indicates that already. So if I save this now and refresh, we get this blue here. So all right, so we can just grab a color here. Let's grab this nice color. Put it in there. Save that. And there we are. All right, so what we can do next is, of course, here, let's say, how do we play around with this one here, the font color or the font style? Let's say your font size. So the font size could be 12. So to do this, I'm going to grab this here. And then what I'm going to do here, I'm going to remove these quotations here. We're going to make them backticks, which is on your keyboard below the escape button. You have a backtick, and here as well, backtick. And this is what we call template literals. So basically what it means is that we don't have to do any more concatenation because it will understand these values or these objects as a value here if I do the following. I'm going to say a dollar sign and these curly braces, and within here, I'm going to say here, options dot font size. And this, if I would make this, let's say uh, 20, save that, refresh, you can see here now it starts to become larger. All right, so you can see here we have one issue here that I want to solve. The tooltip is, is behind this here, and the reason why this is is because of the timing here. 
So we have the draw after. So what I want to do is I want to say after draw, or that's the right term, after draw, but after data sets draw. With a data sets with an S. So if we save this, refresh, now the tooltip will be up top and the label here or the title of this scale will be behind that. So that the, that will mean that the tooltip has the highest priority of being shown first. All right, so we have this here. Now we've done this, all we have here, this combined, let's do a final one here, would be the text here. So let's do here, comma. Let's say here, uh, the Y title, or we can even say title here, it doesn't matter really. So the title here will be a string, and this will be here, the Y scale title. So once I have this here, I'm going to grab this here, of course, I'm going to remove this quotation here. Let's say options.title, save, refresh, there we are. Oh, title, you can see I even misspelled it, but that's all right. I move this here, save this. There you are. So you can see here, this is basically how you can play around with this. So this is the only way how you can do it because you're not able to rotate here the scale title you just built in default. It doesn't allow a rotation or a movement. So that means that we need to play around with that by customizing the text on our own. And that's basically how to do this. So if you want to know about the chart area, which I highly recommend you to study as well, which is this specific video here, understanding chart area in chart.js, which is absolutely crucial as well to know.